happens to see in the body. So it's a surprise when I turn around after praise to find out who's here. It's great to have you with us today. Uh, okay, so um, this is the grand finale of our Add to Your Faith series. Uh, we're going to start relationships um, next week. Um, and I'm looking forward to that a relationship with our country, a relationship with our neighbors, a relationship with our workplace. So we'll just go through some very practical messages on our relationships. Um, if you would, turn to 2 Peter chapter 1. It's always nice to have Mrs. Lange here with us. She's a great encouragement. 2 Peter chapter 1. We will read. Like we have been every week. Read verse 1. All the way through verse 9. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, and them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacks these things is blind and cannot see far off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. So Father, bless this message. We pray this afternoon in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, so uh, we see here, uh, let me just get my notes right, okay. So we see uh, that God has called us, this, this uh, letter is written to encourage us, especially this portion, to encourage us in adding to our faith. <coughs> This particular, in verse 5, we see the last, and it says, Add to your faith all the way to godliness, and then finally godliness, add to that love. Uh, agape love. This word is the word agape love. This is the love that is based on the lover, not on the beloved. Right? It's a love that is, will give all that it has, a love that will sacrifice itself for someone else. This love is purely defined at the cross of Calvary, where Christ gave his life for his enemies, his friends, his sheep, his joy, and also his Jewish brothers and sisters. This love, without this love, without this agape love, which we talked about in the very first meetings we had back in January, all you need is love. That was the Beatles, okay. All you need is love. Without this love, every effort, every effort to restrain ourselves from sinning, every effort that we do to produce good things, every effort that we put towards achievement of some sort, every effort that we have to sacrifice something, all of it is nothing if we don't have this love. This love is the very heart of Christian life. Paul wrote to Timothy in 1 Timothy 1.5, and he said, that love is the very goal or the very end of the commandment, that the commandment was given so that it would bring us to love. Every, the goal of every Bible verse is love. Peter told us in 1 Peter 4, 8, later in this letter, he said, Above all things, have fervent love between you. And this fervent love is fervent, agape love. And the word fervent means bubbling, boiling, 
hot, dynamic love between you. And then finally, Paul told the Colossians in Colossians 3.14, he said, of all the virtues that you put on in the Christian life, above all, put on love, which is the bond of perfectness, or it is the, literally the glue that holds us together as a complete body and even as a complete person. This love, this agape love, is so amazing. It is the highest possible value that exists anywhere in this universe is this word love. The word is used to describe actually who God is in 1 John 3, 7. It says God is love. He has drawn us with this love in Jeremiah 31, 3. He sent his son motivated. God so loved that he sent his son his sending his son was motivated by this love. And then this love is called first love in 1 John 4, 10. And he loved us before we ever loved him. It's a relief for us, isn't it? That, that at the heart of God is love and not something else. And at the heart of God, he is more interested in us loving than he is interested in anything else in our lives. And we are so thankful for that because we can be so interested in other things, our performance or how we're doing with this or how we're doing with that, what we have achieved or what we are actually doing. But in God's heart, it's love. What is he um, really looking for? If we, let's, let's look back to the text. If you go back to 2 Peter 1.8, if you have your Bibles, I want to see something here. Okay, 2 Peter 1 If these things be in you, the things he is talking about are virtue, uh, let's go through them, add to your faith, virtue, no, what's the name one? Virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, uh, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. Okay? If these things be in you and they abound. It means if these things are in you and they overflow, then that then you will never be barren and you will never be unfruitful. If these things abound and they overflow, you'll never be barren or unfruitful. If these things be in you and abound, God is, is talking about this kind of bubbly life. That believers are people. Believers are people that have a bubbling life, an overflowing life, a life in excess, you could say. You could say that Christians are too much. We're just too much because of what God has done in us. God is asking us to add to our, with all diligence, expend maximum energy in the enterprise of adding to your faith these things. And what happens if we don't? What happens if we don't add to our faith these things? Uh, the scripture says that we are barren. The word barren, you, we know what that is. A woman who is infertile is a barren woman. A woman who cannot reproduce, cannot have any children. A person who does not add to his faith these things is someone who ends up barren. Not having any spiritual children. Not having actually reproduced himself in anybody. Because of no overflow, therefore, no reproduction in the Lord. And then the second thing is unfruitful. It means that I'm a tree, but there's nothing growing on the tree. Right? I'm a tree planted, but there's no fruit. And we know inside of every fruit, there is a seed. So it means that if I don't add to my faith these things, it means that I will be fruitless. And, and John... Uh, 15, it says that the Lord has desires us that we would be fruitful to glorify Him. So we see that 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 if we are not, um, if we don't add to our faith these things, that we can be in a state where you cannot tell us from an unsaved person. You can't tell that we're a Christian or not. Now, the last thing is in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we would not be barren, nor would be unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
is it possible that I can know all about the Lord Jesus Christ and actually not have actually received it into my heart and apply it to my life? Is it possible that I can go to church, hear God's word, and yet live a mundane, everyday life? Is it possible that a believer can his live his or her, her life and miss the whole goal? And miss the whole point? Can we miss love? And of course the answer is, yes, we can miss love. Uh, we, we can say at the end of our lives, we, it's possible we could say, God was here and I didn't even know it. Or we could say, God's presence was here to heal me and others, and I didn't recognize it. I've wasted my life. This confession is very possible. At the end of our lives, we can say, I have really wasted my life as possible. And Peter is encouraging us here not to do that. Let's continue one more verse. 2 Peter 1.9. But he that lacks these things is blind and cannot see it far off. He has forgotten that he was purged from his sins. So if we lack these things, the word lack simply means that they aren't there. It, and isn't it true? Truth is kind of, it is what it is. Like, the reason something is true is just because it is true. One and one equals two. And it, it just is. You don't argue about it or talk about it. It just is true. We either have this or we don't have it. It just is. If we lack these things, if they are not present, then two things have happened. One, we can't see it far off. We'll call this this morning spiritual myopia. Myopia means I am nearsighted. I can't see far. Most people have corrective lenses. Uh, you can't drive if you have myopia. You can drive if you are farsighted, but you can't drive if you're nearsighted because everything far away is blurry. And that's how you run into people. Cause accidents. You know, on the way here, it was crazy. I had, I was on my way. I, I was going to say, pastors, our pastor called me and said, hey, could you mention something about our, that revival? I looked something up on the internet and found a, a revival he wanted me to talk about. And I was like so involved in this thing that when I got to Morgan State University, I blew right through a red light. And a guy like almost hit me. I said, whoa. And, and he was like, and he took me the bird. And, you know, he was like really upset at me because I almost caused a huge accident because I couldn't quite see. I was like, and, I, and he was behind me, like, you know, like he was angry at me. And I was like, I said, well, I can't, what can I do? I'm sorry. I am a public menace or something. Like, I am dangerous for humanity. I shouldn't be driving to church when I, when I have spiritual things on my mind because I can be dangerous. Anyway, one, we, if I am lacking these things, it's because of two symptoms. One, spiritual myopia. I cannot see it far off. The second one, that we have forgotten that our sins are forgiven. And this is spiritual amnesia. I forgot. I forgot something. Something very important, and yet I forgot it. And that is that uh, my sins are forgiven. So those, these two things are the starting point for the believer. And Peter is saying they are so powerful, they are so dynamic in us, that if we have these things, let's flip it around the other way. It says, if you lack these things, it is because you are blind, you can't see it far off, and you've forgotten that you were purged from your old sins. But let's flip it around the other way. If you have not forgotten that you were purged from your old sins, and if you have not, if you can see it far off, then you will not lack these things. Right? If you don't forget that you were purged from your sins, that, that you were purged from your sins, and you don't forget that, right, and you can see it far off, then you will not lack these things. So what are these things actually? These motivators, these actuators, these initiators, these, um, these, um, this fuel of the Christian life. They are the things that his love has given us. And we're back to those things that he's done for us as being the source of everything that he asks from us. So one thing is we can't see it far off. How is it? What is he talking about, seeing far off? 
And it is to see our final end. It is to see our destiny. It is to see the, the big picture, the long run. If I don't see myself as I really am, the way that God sees me, if I do, don't see myself in, my, in the final plan, then I will lack energy for this life because I will believe that this life is really important. You know what happened last week, uh, little current events? What happened last week is S&P derated the, the United States from a AAA rating to an AA plus rating. I don't know if you know what that means in the big picture, but it means yours and my futures are not at all sure in the United States today. Uh, the, the value of gold is now fast approaching $1,700. Uh, one year ago, it was $900. It, is, it has almost doubled. Why? Because people no longer have any confidence in the United States dollar. Uh, you know, in Switzerland, the Swiss franc is not part of the EU. So the Swiss franc is an is a, uh, independent currency. And the problem they're having in Switzerland is because they're not in the EU, because the EU also has the same financial problems that we do, borrowing way more than they can pay back. As a consequence, everybody's putting their wants to buy Swiss francs. But the value of Swiss francs is going so high that therefore nobody wants to travel to Switzerland. So Switzerland is trying to reduce their, their lower, they've lowered their interest rates to zero. Like if you buy Swiss francs and put it in the bank, zero interest, just to try to keep people from investing in the Swiss franc. All of that to say this, and that is that this life that we are living in, we, if we are nearsighted, we will, one, we'll believe that things are going okay when they're not going okay. Right? We are on the edge of disaster. We always have been, but especially now. And if you don't believe that, then um, you've got to do some reading and try to prove me wrong. S&P would not have derated the United States if we were okay. We have not had anything less than a AAA rating in 70 years. 70 years we've been the highest rating in the world. That means that if you're looking for secure places to put your money, you put it in AAA rated bonds and AAA rated um, securities and stocks. America is no longer that. We're